Greetings. This session is about learning anywhere, anytime. Hi, I'm Linda Keen, and I'm an architect and an environmental designer who works on green initiatives along the Chicago-Milwaukee corridor. I'm also the founder of an architecture program at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and director and co-founder of the Next.cc eLearning Designopedia. So if one is going to start learning, where in the world should we start? Well, the world is waiting. Formation of the Earth. Outgassing of molecules. This is the evolution of the Earth in 60 seconds. Formation of oldest rocks. Oldest rocks and oceans at 15 seconds. Prokaryotic cell organisms. Photosynthesis by blue green algae. Algae photosynthesis by 30 seconds. We have 30 seconds to go. Eukaryotic cell organisms. Eukaryotic cell organisms. Last band of ion formation. Multicellular organisms. 15 seconds to go. Notice periods of activity and inactivity. Well, things are evolving. Five seconds. And humans. So now that you just watched that quick video, can you put all of the human creation, all of the creations of nature in order? We created this nature clock to help you understand what happened in the Precambrian, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic eras. And that is why learning in nature is important, because for 4.5 million billion years, it evolved before we arrived. So let's step outside. We're going to look down, we're going to look out, and we're going to look up. It's that simple. And we're going to ask that we become explorers of the world. One of my favorite books by Carrie Smith asks us always to be looking, consider everything alive and animate and interesting, create a dialogue with what we're looking at, talk to it, document it, notice patterns. So we created a worksheet for you to go out and find something, pick it, name it, give it a word poem, draw it, draw it again, diagram it, and connect all of it. What does it need to live. So before you go outside, consider taking a few essentials, things that scientists, artists, and designers take, like, well, a journal and some pens to maybe document your findings, and maybe a magnifying glass to look closely, or binoculars to look in the distance, or a flashlight to look into a deep log, or things to collect exciting things to bring home and share. If it's a rainy day, just Google next.cc. You can explore the, right, the world right from where you are. You can click on icons to open new adventures. Next introduces tools that artists, scientists, designers, environmentalists use to observe the world, learn from the world, interact with the world, and contribute to the world. It also introduces languages just like K-12 introducing vocabulary and principles of ideas. Next introduces systems thinking or discovery of how bodies and fields of information and knowledge interact and influence each other. And then finally, design opportunities, what humans create and bring into the world of nature. So let's start looking down. Well, let's see, there's sand and squishy mud and splashy puddles and sitting on rock. And we see, sorry, we see these slides by Dr. Gary Greenberg that show us that, in fact, if we look closely at every grain of sand, it is an amazing panoply of different colors and different minerals and different elements that have evolved over centuries. So it's almost as if the sand were alive, like we are alive. 
because here we are living on this planet called Earth, though it's covered almost two thirds with oceans. And we can see where we live. We can understand the urban forms, the landscape forms that we have introduced or left, and then begin to look at how we are living. If we look more closely, we can go underneath the surface of the ocean and see maritime life and coral reefs and understand the changes of temperature that are affecting these areas of our planet. Or we can look down on the Earth from a NASA satellite and see that the sun is truly the driver of all life on Earth. It is moving the ever-changing ocean currents and ever-changing atmospheric layers to bring us our weather, to keep our temperature, and to keep us well watered and fed. You can also look at maps and understand larger regional areas like the watershed of the rivers and the relationship between the rivers and the lakes because in addition to air, water, the health of water is our health. And then you can use resources under water next water journeys to see wiki watershed and see exactly what type of development is an area and what does that do to the natural water cycle of evapotranspiration, runoff, or infiltration. And we can see, we can actually simulate different opportunities to take the ground of the build at the base of the building when a building is built and bring it up to the rooftop as a green roof to increase habitat, stormwater management, um, heat island effect, and to help restore a building in a balance with the nature that it was built upon. So collect some of those rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic, and splash colors on them. Or look at this United States Geologic Survey tapestry of time, sunlight, and different rock types over centuries. Next, scratch on that surface of the earth and you will find that it is teeming with life. Silver wings and centipedes, worms and slugs and spiders and ants, oh my. In my biome, we have cheeky chickmunks, squirrels, ducks, deers, foxes, raccoons, coyotes. Check out what you have in your biome and take pictures and submit the pictures and help contribute to the National Museum of Natural History Encyclopedia of Life. So next has a biome journey. You can find and define your biome. You can get support from Blue Planet Biomes and they can help suggest what lives there and open your eyes to what to look for when you go outside. And then take off your shoes and tickle your toes in the grass and then remind yourself and everyone around you not to use herbicides, pesticides, or insecticides on living things because it will destroy part of the food chain, those insects and small animals that live on the ground. I discovered in my biome before there was that mowed grass that there were short and long hair prairie and savanna oaks. And I found this chart that shows me the little grass on the left that basically absorbs water and filters water as much as a concrete road or an asphalt driveway. And I saw the beauty of the prairie plants above the ground, but the more beautiful part even was below the ground with the length and the width of the roots that would aerate the soil, allow the worms to go in and do their decomposition work and allow insects to live and to become part of the life, life cycle of nature. Reach out and find out more about the flora and fauna of your area. And don't be surprised if the no maintenance gardener to find out that plants like to live with their friends, just like we like to live with our friends in our communities. So research the biomes of the world because not everyone is living in the biome you or I live in. And you can use next.cc's journeys like plants to find a plant ID app, to find a bug identifier, or to get questions answered about what is that growing in my garden. Plant some new things and label them so that you can walk a closer tapestry between human-made, people-made, and nature-made materials. Restore vegetation and wildlife habitation will come.
Spend time outdoors daily. So let's look at materials. We can look at the beauty of what nature has provided us, but we can also take pictures of what humans have created. We can become collectors of things we find, both people made and nature made. We can look closely at objects in nature, at life in nature, sketching them, abstracting their geometry, and designing with them. Who knew that hollyhocks might be an inspiration for a housing tower, or flowers for a brooch, or a leaf for a water filtering fountain? And then also in nature, there are some invisible traces to look for, and these are patterns, radial, translational, symmetrical, and we can begin to see that nature is a verb. It grows and evolves and layers and tiles and scales like us. And what do people do? They grow and they evolve and they create and they produce. You can look at the artist Richard Serra who's made his list of verbs and go back to Google nature patterns in black and white and begin to look at them to know them and name them. Or you can look at next.cc nature patterns and this time we're going to draw the pattern, we're going to name it, and then we're going to build something three-dimensionally from it. Because to look at something and to use it to create something is the deeper learning. And we find that architects and engineers are after this type of biomimetic learning, trying to understand nature's patterns to create the strongest shelters of people. So get those things you've collected and make a textured space or a textured form, put them outside, and then look at architects and engineers who've created a blur building from water vapor, a Olympic stadium that looks like a bird's nest, and a symphony hall like a rock cave. Or follow in the footsteps of Andy Goldsworthy who walks quietly into nature, finding the beauty of nature and creating sculptures that people can contribute just to say we can be meaningfully participating with nature. Or run back inside and get all that single-use plastic that we know is clogging up our oceans and create landscapes that are then shown in museums like Tara Donovan that make us question what human production offers to nature and what nature production offers to humans. Or look at the beautiful paper products of buildings by the architect Shakur Oban. So to be alive is to be learning. And we saw already that just by looking down, we can discover so many things about the earth that we live in and where we can contribute <clears throat> because these include new ways of looking and learning. We know that the world is finite, but imagination makes us infinite. Even Einstein says that imagination is more important than knowledge because imagination is that spark that gets us to look deeper, further, and innovate. So looking out, run to the ocean if you can, or the seascape, and see the horizon line that marks from the land, the geosphere, or lithosphere, to the atmosphere, and know that scientists are studying the relationships of these three things, to, four things together to understand their influences on climate change and human health. Run back into the city and see how humans transfer the surface of the earth, creating places of beauty and outdoor spaces, and then also rising vertically into the sky for places of learning, commercial, recreation, and education. Then you can come back and look online and see the Hudson River as Peter Stuyvesant did 400 years ago. And then block by block, you can see it built into the Manhattan that we know today. So our ability to look back, look forward, look in is deepening. So looking out is the best integration between human impact and nature. What nature gives humans and what humans gives nature. Walking is the best way to explore this area in your own community. And look at the buildings that are, you gr are growing up with and look at the spaces between the buildings because they are as important as the buildings themselves. Understand the cultural context of where you are and learn how to read a building like a facade or a face. The eyes are our window to our soul and the eyes of a building are the windows to the activities inside.
and then come back in and this time of the year you might find something attached to your sleeve like the inventor of velcro seeds seeds are the life's <laughs> the growing continu continuation of life so collect them be make a seed bank and plant them in your front yard garden in a rooftop terrace at your school grow food harvest the food and then share the beauty of local produce and cooking. A school garden gives us so many ways to learn outside, to cultivate a sense of our place, to learn how we can actually nurture something to take care of it. It opens our senses. It brings our learning into an integrated field. It strengthens our diversity. We can actually work, play, and stay fit outside and collaborate. So looking out, now these are trees in my neighborhood, and we know that we can, that the rainforests are being depleted, but many of us cannot name the trees in our own yard or our schoolyard or our community. So looking at trees, their shape, their leaves, their leaves colors in the fall, their arrangement, go to next.cc tree ID, use the free leaf snap, just take a picture of a leaf and it will help you. Fill out a worksheet to identify a tree by drawing its bark, its trunk, its shape, its leaf, and then run home and ask your family to draw their family tree because we all have DNA of trees in our human DNAs. Find out where you came from and then where you migrated to. And look at bugs who migrate, who came into this tree bark and ate its sustenance and then left, leaving paths just like our concrete highways between cities. And then look and listen for habitats of human beings and insects and animals. And find out where animals and insects live. Find out what you need to be healthy when you're living and what a mouse, a bird, a bee, a tree need. And look at other biomes and imagine what is living outside of those houses in those areas. And share the stories of your place. Look at different ways people live around the world. One way is through vernacular architecture or architecture that's made in a place based on local traditions and local materials. Can you guess what biome these constructions and homes inhabit, are inhabited by people around the world? So you can see that looking out really connects the built environment with the natural environment. And we haven't even begun to talk about bridges and roads and highways and neighborhoods and cities and energy and food and water. But let's move on. Looking up. Looking up begin to see the air and the precipitation and the water cycle, but we see sunlight because without sun we wouldn't see if we didn't have electrical lights, which we didn't have about 150 years ago. And we will begin to see the understanding of the layers of atmosphere, how that radiant energy from the sun warms our earth, is reflected back into our earth and drives the ocean currents and the cycle of weather. We can also Go to the sunlight journey and find the world sunlight map as it was in the last 30 minutes. Who's awake, who's sleeping, who has 24-7 city lights twinkling, and how the air is moving across the globe. So this is the continuous, ever-changing organization of the tapestry of sustainability. So take in a deep breath and realize that the first thing humans need to live is air and then become a meteorologist right from where you are. Learn how to name the weather, how to get signals from the clouds and different types of clouds about the changes that are occurring. Wake up early, enjoy the dusk and the sunset in the city, and find insects and birds that inhabit it, the atmosphere. Go to next.cc and look at sunlight and you can begin or weather or climate or birds or insects and you can find apps that can help you identify what you're looking at right from your own cell phone or iPad. Enjoy the beauties of nature, winter, spring, summer, fall. 
and go to next.cc scales and link to the powers of 10 Ray and Charles Eames and see that actually going up from a picnic in Grant Park all the way up scales of 10 leaving the earth behind into outer space gives you all of these things to look to as you look up and then zoom back down in a crazy roller coaster ride and settle on his arm and go into his arm where you begin to see that the human scale, the human skin scales look like baklava that you might eat for dessert and then they look like the Grand Canyon and then go into the interior workings of the body, the molecular structure, the cellular structure and the areas of activity and inactivity. And then ask yourself, where can I contribute to the world? And so now we're looking at our K-12 schooling. And we find that more people are exposed to being inside than outside. And our sliver of time is very little. So we want you to take the play that we know and love outside and spend learning there as well from your home, in your school, in your community. Students are placed in the driver's seat as they redesign the space in which they play, exploring ideas about what it is to play. Whether dramatic, active, or creative, play can be a well-known game or completely imaginary. So just like you saw the children, draw a built space and then begin to imagine nature. Students use word webs, site maps, and site programming to become aware of where they are. They tell the time from sun and shadows. Planning active and passive, open and intimate, wet and dry areas connected by paths and destination points. So we've created a nature bingo card for you to use and you can change the names based on your bio and then you can connect the environment bingo card of what people have contributed to the area. Most importantly, students are encouraged to draw nature back into play. connecting ourselves both to nature and the built environment. So play, explore, find delight, grow, and grow up in nature. And begin to look at everything that K-12 asks students to learn and realize that areas of interaction can be based on student interest and student inquiry. And we can actually take and integrate mathematics, science, humanities, learning everything, anywhere, anytime. Because real world practices use language arts to describe their work, they use fine arts, graphic design to present their ideas, they use mathematics to make it economically feasible, they use natural sciences to understand the materials they will construct with, and so on. So today, learning and looking are connecting people to place to their purpose. And to help you in this quest, Next.cc is built by college students and professors with pra professionals to connect what they're learning in college with K-12 schools, families, teachers, and schoolyards. And every journey not only has integrated activities, but it also links to virtual field trips, contemporary practices, and institutions working to improve the world. It introduces design across nine connected scales, nano, pattern, object, space, architecture, neighborhood, urban, region, and the world. And it shows us that anytime humans create something, they at least influence the the less 
lesser scale, and the larger scale, if not more than one scale. So learning about who you are from where you are every day is possible today in new ways with the internet. And next.cc helps you select if you're interested in a scale or science, technology, engineering, the environment, spatial and temporal relationships of the natural and constructed world, or architecture, indoor and outdoor living spaces, buildings and groupings of buildings connected with natural living and non-living systems. Language, English as a second language, learning the powers of words, or social studies, our past and present and future of human creation and cultural development, adaption and change to diverse places over time. Or science, experience, observation and reflection to change diverse, <laughs> to um, living and non-living systems and generation of designs. And then technology, to become digitally fluent is to have access and ability to use to information, visualize ideas, and communicate across a broad band of media. And then, of course, engineering, to look at problem solving through an iterative process like design. And then math, quantity, relationships, and so on. Art and design, expression, examination, exploration of life and culture. So here we are, and we can learn outside every day. We can learn everywhere in every combination. Because learning about the health of the world and our health is connected. And the future for all of us is interdisciplinary. So one of the things we can help you do is encourage you, as you set up your home office to learn from home, set up a design center. And this is these um, I, suggestions are listed under something that was created during COVID by Next.cc and the School Zone Institute with suggestions of how to set up a design center so that you have your pens there and your pencils, you have your iPad, you might even have a light table, you have scissors and glue and paper so that you can make and create and draw and sketch and document as you're learning. And we've helped you under Creativity Connections with those worksheets that we shared with you. And we're on week eight so far about where is the living living on earth? So we know that humans and nature are together and humans it is in human nature to design design is our nature so learning anywhere anytime connects these simultaneously so learn from next.cc let it support your journey and start your journey today i look forward to you checking in on next.cc the, the c stands for curiosity and compassion and I hope that you'll reach out and let us know how you're using it. And I look forward to answering any questions that you might have about how to access this and get started. Thank you very, very much. Most importantly, students are encouraged to draw nature back into play. Webs, site maps, and site programming to become aware of where they are. They tell the time from sun and shadows. Planning active and passive, open and intimate, wet and dry areas connected by paths and destination points. Students are placed in the driver's seat as they redesign the space in which they play, exploring ideas about what it is to play. Whether dramatic, active, or creative, play can be a well-known game or completely imaginary. 